Well, I think the biggest thing that um, we want to focus on is build on the positives of the good things that our team did in our last game. You know, competitive spirit did a lot of good things in terms of being able to pass the ball effectively in the game, make some explosive plays. Um, you know, defense did a pretty good job for the most part. Uh, so, you know, obviously, you know, there's things that we need to work on and we want to be positive about how we fix those things in the future so that we can continue to progress as a team. Um, you know, Arkansas is, you know, really a good team. Uh, they've had some really tough games, some really close losses, uh, but they've scored a lot of points. You know, K.J. Jefferson is a really good um, big-time quarterback, big guy, hard to sack, can run, uh, very talented arm. Um, you know, Sam does a great job with these guys in terms of their ability to run the ball, whether it's quarterback runs or whatever. Uh, they play very aggressively and very well on defense. Uh, they've got good specialists, really good kicker. Um, you know, got a good running back. I mean, this is a good team. Um, and I, I don't think you should, we, we should be looking at their record uh, and making any kind of judgments on, you know, what they're capable of because they're capable of scoring points and they're capable of playing really good defense and um, they're a very well coached team. Hey coach, just what have you seen from the growth of your defense and its ability to not only adjust but kind of respond at halftime? Yeah, well, you know, the defensive players have played hard. They've been a, a, a really, you know, solid group from an attitude standpoint and, um, you know, they practice well, they try to prepare well. Um, and, you know, they've, they've played well together and done, done a good job of minimizing mental errors. Um, we didn't have a lot of mental errors in the last game. I mean, Terion got kind of thrown into a, a bad spot with minimal reps when Malachi went down. So, um, but other than that, you know, the, the, the guys have been really doing a good job of preparing and minimizing mistakes. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to continue to do that. Yeah, halfway through the season, how would you evaluate the, the job that Tommy Reese and Kevin Steele have done as coordinators? You know, I, I, I'm not going to publicly comment. You know, we're happy with the coaches that we have, and uh, we're always trying to get better. We're all working hard together to try to get better, um, trying to figure out, you know, what, what's the best um, solution to help our team grow and develop, uh, whether it's, you know, style of play, uh, doing more things that they're capable of doing, um, you know, trying to minimize the negative plays. And, you know, I'm, I'm pleased with, you know, the effort that everyone is giving and trying to uh, give input to fix those things. Everybody's responsible for a better way. So um, if we have deficiencies as a team, you know, that's kind of on me. At the halfway point of the season, you have as many interceptions as you did all of last year. Just what do you think has led to the increase in interceptions so far on defense? Uh, you know, I think we've done a good job of pressuring the quarterback. Um, I think the pass rush has been good, even when we only have four guys rushing. And I think, you know, that that has affected the quarterback to some degree. Uh, I do think that... Um, you know, our guys all have good ball skills and they all play the ball well in the air. And I think we play the ball with more confidence. Uh, so that's, you know, something that we, you know, really like to see in all the defensive backs that we have. And, um, you know, hopefully we'll be able to continue to get turnovers because that's going to be, you know, huge for us in terms of being successful in the future is having a successful turnover margin. Uh, with the new offensive coordinator at Arkansas, how does their offense look different this year? Uh, not not a whole lot. Um, you know, they, they have a really good system, a really good scheme. I think they do a great job of utilizing the players that they have. Um, you know, the quarterback runs are always, you know, something that adds another layer of uh, focus that you have to be concerned about on defense, uh, which they're really, really good at. Um, they had great play action passes. They can throw the ball down the field and make explosive plays. Uh, there's, there's not a whole lot of difference between, you know, what they've done in the past and uh, what they're doing now. I mean, some, some little things, but, um, 
you know, they've been very productive on offense. So we're, we're going to have to play really, really well. To the untrained eye, Deontay Lawson looks like he's playing at a really high level. I guess from a coaching perspective, how would you describe his play this season? Oh, you know, he's played really, really well. Uh, we really miss him when he's not out there, when he missed the game. Um, his leadership is great. Um, he, I think, helps everybody else play better with his communication, uh, signal calling. Um, and, you know, his performance has been very good. You know, he's a very conscientious guy that uh, is a good athlete and uh, has the ability to make plays, but he's putting himself in the right place to do it because he's so conscientious as a player. You're going to chase the left. Was the difficulty to run the ball Saturday more about Alabama's own execution or was Texas A&M making a, a commitment to stop it? No, I think it was a combination of both. Uh, I think that... You know, we miss ID'd some plays in terms of who we're blocking and where we're going to. And, um, you know, I think we we missed some things on some of their stunts and pressures. Um, you know, their front seven is really good. And um, we had some other plays that, you know, if we finished blocks, we'd have had much more productive plays. Uh, so we got to do a better job of finishing. Um, but we also knew that, you know, going into the game that it was going to be tough sledding up front and uh, we were going to have to be able to throw the ball effectively. And I was very pleased with that part of it. Um, still got to work on protections, but on how we protect the quarterback. We go to Mike Rodak. You didn't have one? Okay. Uh, Cody, right there. Curious how you thought Jaden Roberts play and what that means for the offensive line moving forward? Yeah, well, Jaden, you know, is. You know, I love to see guys like him who have worked hard for two whole years and in his third year, you know, gets an opportunity, uh, especially in the home state, uh, to go out and play. The guy has, you know, a good physical presence. Uh, he played hard in the game. Um, you know, it's really tough when you have a guy that practiced all week and then he's not able to play in the game and then the next guy's got to go in and he didn't have the same opportunities to prepare. But, you know, I thought Jaden did a pretty good job of managing it and handling it and, um, you know, played with a lot of grit, determination, and toughness and executed fairly well. Coach, with the quarterback, Jalen Milrow, against Texas, when he threw that pick, it seemed like it didn't go like it went this weekend, where he threw the pick and he bounced back. He said he's growing every day. That's what he said after the game. Are you seeing that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I think the big thing that, uh, you know, we've tried to continue to get him to understand is you got to keep playing the next play. Um, you know, there's not always going to be perfect plays. But um, whatever happened on the last play is a learning experience for you to grow and get better and focus on what you have to do, you know, the next play. But you cannot allow one play to affect the next play. Um, so, and that's something that I think he's learned and doing a lot better. Uh, staying much more positive, uh, you know, on, on the sidelines, uh, communicating really well with his teammates and the coaches in terms of what he saw, what he didn't see, what he needs to do to, to get it corrected. So uh, I think that's you know, something that comes a little bit with experience, but I think it also comes with awareness. And uh, I think we're making good progress in both areas. Coach, Jermaine Burton had one of his best games, his best game of the season. What's allowing for his success on the field? Yeah, well, you know, Jermaine has got great ability. Um, we want to you know, sort of keep him focused on doing the things that he needs to do to be consistent, you know, in his performance. Um, fundamentally, just keep working on things like, um, you know, he runs good routes, he's got great ability, he's got really good hands, you know, ball security, you know, things like that. Um, not getting too emotional in the game where you make bad choices and decisions. Uh, so, you know, some of those things are just things that we continue to work on. but. We're really excited about the game that he had, his performance, what we can build on with that. And uh, I think he's learning that, um, you know, you really don't want to do anything to help the other team. And he's done a lot to hurt the other team, so let's don't do anything to help him. Coach, can you kind of talk about Caleb Downs and how he seems to embrace the pressure of being a DB in the SEC? Well, um, you know, I don't know if pressure is – something that goes with being a, a, a DB uh, or at any position, really. 
you know, it's a matter of uh, Caleb has played really well for us. Uh, he's, you know, very mature. Um, you know, the guy really pays attention to detail and does a really good job in preparation. Uh, wants to know what he's supposed to do, how he's supposed to do it, why it's important to do it that way. Uh, he's got great football instincts and savvy, so he kind of understands what the other team's trying to do, which I think is important as well. So uh, he's, he's done a good job of that. Um, you know, I don't want any of our players to feel like they have pressure to play at their position. I think when you prepare well and you're confident and you have poise uh, and you're focused on execution, the, 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 that shouldn't be an issue. I mean, it should be positive energy and attitude to go forward in those three things to be able to be successful. You mentioned uh, being uh, positive in, in uh, correcting mistakes, and I wonder about uh, penalties, uh, if there's a positive way to correct penalties. Well, we had nine pre-snap penalties in the game, and I think a lot of those were created by – you know, the fact that we had trouble clapping in the game because of the noise, so we went on silent. And when we went on silent, you know, the guard taps the center. And as soon as the guard tapped the center, they'd stem and move the front, which is not illegal. It was perfectly a good thing for them to do on their part. And we had numerous times where guys flinched you know, because when you go on silent, there is no snap count. One of the one of the the advantages of playing offense is you know what the snap count is, so you know when you can get off the ball. Well, when it's so noisy, you have to go on silent. You lose that advantage. And uh, if we're going to do that in the future, we obviously need to practice it more so our players don't get spooked uh, by moving defense, uh, because everybody's got to you know sort of go on the ball. So we had 14 penalties in the game. You know, none of them were pre-snap false start penalties. So are they correctable? Absolutely. How much was created by the atmosphere and environment? And our choice to try to go on silent, um, you know, that, that, that became a little bit of a problem for us in the game. So, all right, thank you.